We're going to give the final word tonight to, uh, to Jackie. You can read the viewer emails on our website after the program. We'll take a break. When we come back, you will meet our New Yorker of the Week. She's giving a voice to dozens of people who may not normally have one. You'll meet her next. Don't go away. Time to turn our attention to tonight's honoree. She's giving a voice to suicide attempt survivors to help others at risk. Take a look. This is New Yorker of the Week. As a photographer, Desiree Stage looks to put a face on a statistic to add humanity to a number. After surviving a suicide attempt, she struggled to connect with others who could relate to her experience. The only time that I did find any representation of people who had attempted suicide was in statistics. There were also these stereotypes about what a suicide attempt survivor looks like, who attempts suicide, what kind of person is that? And you know, everything's dark, depressed, isolated. Desiree is trying to bring them out of the dark. Five years ago, she started an online portrait series called Live Through This. She meets fellow survivors, listens to them, takes their portrait, and tells their stories. When you are looking at someone's face, and you're looking into their eyes, and you're seeing the creases in their face, and you're looking at their hair, and you're like, oh, they look like this person I love and I care about. She's traveled to more than 20 cities to meet with survivors, all to provide a platform to express themselves without judgment. Finding a community that understood how traumatic and severe and important it was in each individual's life. That's just really special. You really don't find that a lot. At Live Through This, they also find hope. They all want to get better. You know, they all are looking forward, which I think is really inspiring. Desiree deserves a lot of recognition because she has taken her own struggles and she's turned it into something incredibly positive. Just a sense of direction. Um, and if, if I haven't found it yet, I'm definitely on the way there, which is not something I could have said before. I think that that's one of, one of the biggest things that I've learned through meeting Desiree is definitely that. Just take ownership of your life, and if you're not happy, change it. A life lesson that motivates Desiree as well. I like that I always have to make people laugh. And so, for giving a voice to other survivors, Desiree Stage is our New Yorker of the Week. And joining us now in the studio is our New Yorker of the Week, Desiree Stage. Thank you so much for coming in Thank and uh, you for having me. sharing your story with us. Uh, what are some of the misconceptions that you hear about suicide constantly? Oh, all the time. Uh, someone who is suicidal is dark and hiding in the corner wearing all black, um, that sort of thing. And you don't, you don't realize that it could be the person sitting right next to you. It could be anybody. It could be the happiest person you know. What's your response to them when they say some, something like that or ask the same question you've heard over and over? My question is really, it, or my answer is really, it could be anybody. Um, and the website is proof of that. Let's talk about the, um, the website. What sparked the idea to create this project? Uh, the, the inspiration was my own suicide attempt, um, loss of friends, loss of people I've loved, and, and seeing that there was really no resource for that, for people to talk about that. And we were, we were completely invisible. I don't want to get into your personal business to the extent that you're Fine. comfortable. It's not, I'm not here to, we didn't invite you here to talk about the past. We're talking about the present and the future. Um, but in general terms, in your times of need, uh, did you find that there were adequate resources to help you through? I have been incredibly lucky in that I have a support group of friends and family who really love me and who have always been there for me. The problem with suicide and suicidal thinking is that no matter how good or bad your support group is, you feel alone. And it's just your mind lying to you. What about those who don't have big families, supportive friends? Uh, what are the resources like for them? It is tough. It is really uh, locally based. It depends on, on what's happening in your city or your town. Rural areas are particularly affected by this. Um, but there are national resources like 1-800-SUICIDE. So you have this idea. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you start? Do you just present it to someone? Do you start doing it? How was it first received? I want to take a picture of you and make it public. Mm -hmm. And this is such a personal moment in your life. How was it received? It was slow going in the beginning. Um, it took me about two years to get 15 portraits. And now, on my fifth year, I have 112. So it was this last couple of years that have been really um, tough, but or easy, rather. But um, yeah, in the beginning, it was, all right, I'm going to do this. 
here are my thoughts, what do you think? And then once I did a couple and once people kind of started to see what I was doing and, and putting it out there, they were like, all right, well, can I do this? And it was friends of mine who first offered and I had no idea about their past or their mm -hmm. histories. And you've also now traveled to meet other survivors. What are those uh, interviews, interactions like? These people are strangers at first, and I'm assuming there's, uh, they're, they're probably your friends now. Maybe I'm wrong, or at least you've, you've made a connection with them on some level. What are those moments like? Yeah, I keep in touch with them. Um, you know, I, I kind of set it up so that I don't know much about them, so that I'm going into it with a fresh face and I don't know anything. And I do come out with new friends. Um, you know, it depends. It depends on the interview, and it depends on the person. Sometimes they're really excited; they really want to tell their story, and sometimes they're terrified, and they've never done this before. They don't know what to say, and it's just like, all right, well, I'm here with you. I've been there, um, and I think that's what makes it's it's that they know that I've been there that makes them trust me, and we get through it together. Uh, and I'll, we just want to, for our viewers' sake, uh, point out that all the permissions have been granted to be on your website, and we asked you if it was okay to show the portraits <laughs> for our air. So uh, before someone calls up and says, how can you put these people on television, right. let's all been sorted out beforehand. Uh, let's talk about the pictures. Uh, what are you hoping to accomplish by the individual portrait? What are you looking for in the person uh, through the picture? What I'm really trying to do is have people look into their eyes, and that's why... The, the eyes are in such, they're in such focus. Um, because we, when we talk about depression, when we talk about suicide, if we're talking about it at all, we're turning our, our heads. You know, we're not, we don't, we can't make eye contact. We can't really attack it directly. Um, and I think it's kind of important to just talk about it frankly, calmly. It's something that happens regardless of whether it's good or bad, and we've got to get through it. Is there one picture that you uh, want to show everybody? We're not going to have it ready to show them, but is there one that you, <laughs> Uh, that stands out to you, a moment that's, uh, that's different from the rest? Um, it would be probably one of the first portraits of Krista earlier on the website um, because she, in talking to her, I found so many parallels between her life and my own. We met in New York, but we grew up blocks away from each other in Miami. <laughs> we went to the same schools, had the same teachers, had no idea. And in listening to her story, I realized that I had to tell my own, that I was doing this and I thought, well, I can't get in the middle of it. But I was in the middle of it the whole time. So it would be her. We'll have that website for our viewers uh, once again in just a few moments. Um, what have you learned about yourself along the way? Just specific to the, 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 the okay. journey with the portraits. I have learned that I'm not alone. And that was what I set out to show other people. And it taught me the same thing. Um, I really thought that, you know, I, w I was past it, that I didn't... I just wanted to help other people, and it really has helped me. It's given me a community, and it's given all of these other people, all of these other people, a community as well. So, how can we help you? Are you looking for what? Volunteers, uh, <sighs> donations? What would make this organization? Yes. Uh, you picked up so many different portraits in the last couple yeah. of years. What's the, what's the big picture? How can New Yorkers yeah. help you? I am looking for funding for donations, um, support for my Patreon campaign, or through the website you can donate. Um, I'm also always looking for new stories. Anyone who's local can contact me if they want to share their story. Um, yeah, stories stories, and, and donations. Stories and some money would help. Yeah. Uh, Desiree <laughs> Stage, I want to say thanks so much for uh, coming in, telling your story to the rest of us, and certainly good luck as your project continues. Uh, so we have that uh, website now for our viewers for more information on uh, Desiree's portrait series. You can visit livethroughthis.org. Desiree Stage, our New Yorker of the Week. That's all the time we have for now. I'm John Schumer. We're off Monday in recognition of Martin Luther King Jr. Day, and there's no show Tuesday, so New York One can bring you live coverage of President Obama's State of the Union address. So I'll talk with you Wednesday.